everybody. The moment is here. That's right. The long-awaited interview with the man, the myth, and the legend. Aaron, who do we got today? Oh, we got Carter Sigler. Who is Carter Sigler? I, I would let him explain it, but I'm going to kind of talk if, just if, a little bit and then let him take over. If you Google Carter Sigler, what do you find? Your internet's going to shut down. <laughs> You're going to break the internet. <laughs> so... Actually, Carter, we've uh, Carter and I have known each other for a little while. Um, goodness, we've been uh, we we've ridden on Rag Ride that ride across Iowa many years in a row consecutively. So, um, but let me uh, just kind of preface that with uh, the diehard Iowa Hawkeyes fan. I could hardly tell. Yep. And oh yeah, it's on my room. It's kind of decked out a little bit. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Pretty Kansas City Chiefs. So he's a Chiefs fan and a Hawkeye fan. So, so you've known Carter for how long? Well, he's uh, – goodness. I've known of Carter for many, many years, pretty much his whole life. However, yep. we just kind of got acquainted – what was it, 10 years ago, Carter? Uh, yeah, I would say – what are we talking, 2000? It was when I w went down to Arizona one time to – I think see my stepmom's parents, I think, and we, we met up, and I think that's when we, for like, officially that's met, right. I think, like, maybe like 2012, maybe, like, maybe a little before that. I'm yeah. not sure on the exact, exact like, date, but. And then I met Carter for the first time this summer. Matter of fact, the first time I met Carter, I was lighting off fireworks in your front yard. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that was pretty cool. I mean, that was... Yeah, that was pretty awesome is what it was. You had a you had a full brigade welcome. Yeah, that was pretty sharp. Yep. So, Carter, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, and uh, we can kind of roll into that. Um, all right. So, first of all, I have, I have cerebral palsy, so I'm going to try to explain it to the, the less medical term that I can because it's kind of – Okay. But it's it's kind of like um, it affects my brain. So like I'll say the left side of my body works better than my my right side of my body. So I mainly use my left hand. Like I don't really have motion of my right hand or or the part of my right side of my body. My left side is always my my strong suit, and obviously you can see I'm in a wheelchair. So it really there's some avenues that that um, prevent me from doing things like doing basic daily things like getting out of bed, um, uh, just basically you know doing normal stuff like putting your shirt on. I, so I need need help doing that stuff. Um, but it's but it's um, more an aspect of um, I I well I was I was born with it so. So it's more of a more of a uh, brain injury, I guess you could say. It's something that affected the brain that um, caused caused me to have cerebral palsy. It, you know, it was it wasn't something that just that I got in the car accident and it just happened. It was something that um, happened when I was when I was born. And they found they found out probably when I was oh probably two or three when that I had cerebral palsy. So it, Took them a minute to figure out what it was, but that's what they ultimately uh, found out. So now you live. You live where? I live in in uh, Bluegrass, Iowa. I live, which is uh, if somebody looks that up on a map, they won't find it. So they got to look. They got to look for Davenport, right? Um, if you, like if you're looking at a map, um, probably not. Probably Davenport. Yeah, you're. That's mostly right. If you, but if you, obviously if you Google it, it'll just it'll come up. But yeah, if you just if you look on a map, probably won't be there. And you live in probably one of the coolest houses I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. Yes, my this the room. Well, the room I'm in now is actually my mother's house. But yes, the the one at my dad's house. That's the log cabin. Um, he actually he actually built that himself. Well, I hell. he uh, built that. Um, himself and it's all it's log cabin it's all wood it's it's really nice we live on uh, what a, about an acre or two so it's a real nice land and 
it's sometimes a lot, a lot of work, but we, we enjoy it for sure. Yep. Now, you are in school right now, right? I am. I'm going to, uh, I'm at North Central Technical College. It's, it's actually in Wisconsin, but I can do all my uh, school stuff online. So I don't even have to leave my house. So I can just, I can roll, I can roll out of bed in the morning and get on my computer and I'm, I'm in class. So it's really, um, really convenient. I am going, I'm going for a, uh, IT computer specialist, uh, associate's degree. Okay. So what does that, what does that mean when you grow up here in the next year or so and you graduate from college? What are you going to do? Um, I mean, well, my, my main goal is I'm on, I'm on social security right now. So my main goal is to get off that and get a, get a job and eventually uh, be able to move out and live on my own and have more uh, independence than I do now. Okay. That's pretty cool. So, you know, I'm going to kind of ask a couple questions here, if you don't mind, Carter. And, and please understand, if you don't want to answer the question, it's totally fine. Um, so what were, you know, with having cerebral palsy, you know, it, it restricts your movement, obviously, physically. So um, what kind of challenges did you have growing up? that maybe other people didn't have? I think just being, being, uh, I guess just being a normal kid. I mean, just to like in elementary school, to be able to ride a bike, to be able to play on the playground, to be able to go out and, you know, I can't, obviously I can't go out and play baseball or softball or football or any of that sort. So it's kind of, kind of limited to what I, what activities I can do, like, um, like being outside and, and doing what other what other kids did for activities, like some of the stuff like like gym class I couldn't participate in because obviously that that's physical, so it's yeah. it would limit limit me what I what I could do. But I I, I kind of agree with that, and I disagree with that because uh, we'd always have an arm wrestling match. Every year, yeah, yeah I, would always, I would always beat you too. So that's just, we'll that <laughs> I know you did, man. That's why I had to stop that. <laughs> so, so with that being said, like I say, I don't see it as a disability, man. You've got some mad strength there, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, he built a log cabin. <laughs> so, yeah. So then, um, yeah. So, what advice do you, would you have to somebody that maybe um, has a physical ailment or disability, maybe that? You know, they get down on themselves a little bit because that's got to be, you know, it's, it's got to take a toll mentally as well. Um, to be honest with you, it does. Like, there's some days, days that I uh, wake up in the morning and say, wow, why, 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 did, why did I get chosen not to be able to walk or, you know, do different things that people can do? But you just got to push through it because these are the cards you're dealt and you can't, I mean, you can't change it. So you just gotta make the best of it. You gotta make the best of it every day. And there's some challenges that you're gonna go through, but all you gotta do is adapt. And that's just the easiest way to go about it because if, you, if you're just gonna sit there and feel sorry for yourself all day and just be a down in the dumps, you're not gonna get far in life. You're just gonna be um, uh, sad all the time and not be able to reach your potential. So that's what I try to do every day to make sure that I'm that I'm striving for what I want to do and make make sure that I'm not getting not making myself feel bad for myself because I shouldn't shouldn't do that because I I didn't do this to myself so why do you why should I make myself feel bad for myself I just gotta strive for what I want want in life and just move forward that's the best way to do it you know Carter I I think you know this through some of the things that you're you're a huge inspiration to me on, on a lot of different platforms um, from a mental standpoint, from a, uh, from just the way that you have an outlook on life that I, that I'm going to tell you right now, that's where most people have a disability. They have a disability because they, they can't have the outlook on life that you have, even though that you may have a, a physical ailment, they've got a mental ailment, you know, and, and I'm not saying that to pin people down, you know, or talk bad, but you've got that's that's a true talent that you have and i learned from that and i know that the majority of people that i know that have surrounded ourselves around you they totally agree with that as well you know 
So I, I thank you for the outlook that you have and, and what you've taught others and what you continually teach others as well, because you're going to go far, dude. That's, that's the cool thing. And I, and I just excited as heck for you to, to watch how things unfold for you. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Definitely. And, uh, and, it, and I don't take the arm wrestling match against you, dude, just cause you beat me. So I don't, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. But so, so tell me about what, what are you looking forward to? Uh, how much school do you have left? Oh, I, I got, let's say, I'm going to say I should be done by next spring. So I'm looking 2019 next spring. Hopefully I'll be all done with it. That's awesome. And then when you get out, what is, what's that dream job look like? Um, obviously you can't like, you don't have a crystal ball, so you can't like fully picture it, but something that's, something that's obviously helped us to where, um, you know, maybe on the phone, being, when being able to help people through their problems. So like, let's say their computer stops working or the internet goes down or their computer even gets hacked you and they, they see a suspicious email and they don't know what to do. They can call me and I can, I can try to walk them through what to do and, that's and what not important. to do more importantly. Awesome. There you go, what not yep. to do. Yep. And that's the thing. So when they call you, are they, do you give your real name or do you have like a, a nickname like player? I mean, I mean, I guess it would depend. I mean, if you're like talking like Microsoft, you probably should like, you know, do your real name. But I mean, you know. Yeah. And the reason I say that is we had a nickname for this guy. It was yeah. actually player. So either you can tell the story or I'll tell the story there, Carter. So how did you come up with the name, nickname player? You can tell the story. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So we were actually in this town, um, and actually we're, Tom Heath, one of the guys that was actually pulling him, and he's like, and all of a sudden everybody just kept going, hey, Carter, hey, Carter, mostly females, okay? So we're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. there it is. <laughs> there it so is, Carter. So we're just Carter. rolling down the road, and it's just like, and then uh, Tom's like, dude, you just like, it, like everybody you're knows you. a big you. deal. Yeah, he goes, yeah. I'm a, I'm a player, man. <laughs> they call me player. I say, oh my gosh. So that became his nickname. So it was, it was great. It was great. So, so uh, how many years, Carter, have you uh, rode the last day of Ragbri with these guys? And what is Ragbri? Ragbri is a ride across Iowa, right? Yes. And let me, let me, because people, people ask me all the time, I'll, well, how long is the race? Ah, it's it's for number one, it's not a race. Nope. It's something right. you, you do every day. You go from um, uh, town to town, and then there's a mid midpoint town, and then you um, you go to a few more towns, and then that's your stopping day for the day, and then you get up and go again. You, you know, you you're not you don't get first place medals. You don't get like a reward for finishing first or last. It's 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 basically um, it's more connecting to different people that you normally wouldn't. It's something that's um, obviously um, it's probably more mental than physical because it's probably well you guys know it more than me because I just ride, but I'm pretty sure it's more mental than it more than it is physical. But it's it's really cool. We we have um, sponsored sponsored quite a few people i remember when you guys sponsored me for the door opener that you that i have at my dad's house mm -hmm. that was pretty cool i think you guys did that like well like 2013 or 2014 yeah, a long time ago it was quite a few years ago yeah yep and then then the last few years we've um sponsored disabled vets and we as you know you guys will be going down there in two weeks for the um down in uh, New Mexico for building the uh, new houses or the new house and all that. So that's really cool. And also, um, um, what are they called? Um, the dis the disabled hand, riders. We, hand cyclists. Uh, yeah, the hand cyclists. Yep, there you go. Hand cyclists. We, I, we rode with um, Gerard. Um, tell me the love to um, Gerard and Ricky well, and Matt. Yeah, there you go, Ricky and Ricky and Matt. They they were they did they did even more than that. They did 
How many miles did they do? They did, did a ton. They rode from all the way across the United States. From Washington to Maine. Yeah, it's like 4,000 something miles. Yeah, because then they do from like Ju July or like June to whatever. Yeah, June, yeah, June through July. And they ended in August. Yep. So what, uh, what's RAGBRAI mean to you? Um, it's, it's really cool because um, in a way it makes me makes me uh, feel normal for a day. It makes me feel like I'm part of something. I'm part of a team. And I just, it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel good to be able to be, be able to get back in a small way. And it makes me feel good that I'm part of something so special. And people are like, um, what's your team? I'm like, well, it's not really a team. It's, it's more like a family because, you know, they they all come together for, one week I do it, me and my dad do it for one day. And also, also I got to get my dad in there because he's part of it too. He, yeah. um, he actually built my, the, the last bike that I, or the bike that I use now, he built that, oh, I would say like two or three years ago. Yep. So he's, he's a big part of it too. He loves, he loves doing it. And I just, I think it's just totally awesome just to be able to get back for one day and just, like I said, just feel a sense of, uh, normal safer for even even sometimes I don't even do the whole day just sometimes for even 50 some miles it's just, it just makes you feel feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself almost yeah I would say Carter you don't feel like you're part of the team you are part of the team yeah you are you are the team <laughs> you know the thing is is we may be able to pedal physically but it's 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 the heart that you have that drives us to do that because you have remember we're we are we're not <laughs> we're human and by the time we get to that side of the state we're exhausted but you energize us to the level to where we we push through on a high note so i seriously appreciate what you contribute to the team and and what you what you do for all of us? So that's actually kind of cool. Next year, next year we're going to get you a BB gun to get the guys to ride faster. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm good for that. I'm sure I you bet are. You are. In, I you know bet what? you are. We're going to put it in your right hand. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So hey, what do you um? You know, we go back to some of those struggles. I remember talking a while back, and we didn't get into too much detail. Have you ever had any dreams, you know, of, like, you walking or you um, being able to do things that you can't physically do, and then you wake up, and then what does that do to you, you know? Um, well, yeah, it's kind of like, like you say, I kind of have some dreams that, you know, you, just, you're, you imagine you feel like you're walking, and you're, Everything's good, and then you wake up. You're like, "Dang it, that was just a dream." I wish that was reality. So it's kind. It is kind of, kind. It does kind of suck sometimes because you feel like, um, feel like you really, you really want to do it and you want to strive for it, but you just, you know, that you can't. But then, then on the other side of it, you can't. Again, you can't. I can't make myself feel sorry for myself because. Yeah. I mean, I, you know. You know. So there's, there's. There's different aspects of it. Yes, I, I have. A lot of times, I feel like, oh yeah, you get to, you can get up and grab your, grab something to eat real quick out of the, out of the microwave, and you can, um, just simple things like, let's say I drop my remote when I'm watching TV. What, how am I supposed to get the remote? So I got, I got to use my chair. Or I got to go, I got to go over and grab the grabber tool that I have and pick it up. So it just simple things like that. Like, you know, I can't reach down and pick up the remote. So it's kind of just simple daily things like that. You are like, man, I wish I could walk so I could just walk over there and pick up the remote and, and do different things without, you know, without having to adapt so much. But it's, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's a struggle, but you just, again, you just have to work through it. Yeah, and I think some of those things we take for granted for those of us that can walk, you know. Uh, what, you know, you talked about that a little bit, and that's why I, I, I know you'll remember this, and I'm going to kind of let the cat out of the bag here, but I remember on RAGBRAI, one of the things that when you're on, in, in Iowa, they have cornfields everywhere, for those that don't know. 
And Every, whenever you got to use the restroom, everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, and whenever you got to use the restroom, <laughs> people will go out into the cornfield, right, Carter? Yeah. So, hey, there's no difference. So we're like, hey, Carter, you need to go pee? We'll take you down the cornfield, buddy. So that was one of the things. Like to me, it's normal. See, dude, we're gonna we we treat you just like anything else, and you know anyone else, and we we appreciate the fact that you know. Like I say, what you bring to us, man. It, so yeah, yeah you're, Carter Pete in the cornfield. Yep, yeah, Carter. <laughs> there, there, there is no immunity to jokes with Carter. Nope, nope. <laughs> you're the toaster. Yes. So yeah, state fair running people over in in your wheelchair. Yeah, those. Yep. That's right. Get out of your way, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been hit by a golf cart a few times. <laughs> That's actually no joke either. I actually that actually happened to me. <laughs> I I believe you, Carter. <laughs> yeah. So, well, good. Awesome. hey, if you have a shout out to anybody, you know, like somebody you want to kind of say thank you to or um, that you appreciate it for, it, who who might that be? By chance? Um, I mean, I don't really want to put it down to one person, but it's it's got to be my dad. My dad, hands down. I mean, he's always been there. No matter what, he's been there since day one. He's always adapted anything that I need. Like if, he, if I need to, like just for example, he's built different things for me to get in the house. Um, he, he was always there when I went through my surgeries. I had about five surgeries. So, I mean, I was counting on, on him always being there and always always being a good support system for sure. Yeah. So I was always more more than appreciated for sure yep yeah he's good looking he is a crafty guy and he can make some good craft beers too just look oh, at yeah. look he, uh, he actually just made uh about two uh two things of it uh hey, yes you. yesterday and uh the day before because he's actually um going into a brewing contest or whatever oh wow November tenth or whatever right. it is so He's been he's brewing a lot of beer, so. And Carter, you're you're 20, right? I am. Yep. And you have not tasted or tried any of these beers, correct? I have not. I can swear. I can swear to that under under <laughs> I swear it. For the record, we're we'll leaving it alone, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Awesome. That's good. Hey, anything that you want to mention? Anything that you want to talk about? Because we love talking with you, man. So. Any um. Another thing is. So everybody knows the Chiefs and Broncos Broncos are on tonight. So let's make sure that we tune in ESPN and make sure that we watch it because I make sure that we all see that our record Chiefs are going to win and you're going to be all sad. It's fine. <laughs> but then, when, when we know, win, yeah, we know. Chiefs and Broncos. October, but you know what? You know what that is? October 28th. That's right. We're you're gonna be at the cheese game, and I'm actually going to the cheese game with my dad. So we're actually gonna meet up and have dinner, and maybe root for each other's team for just a, a minute or two. But ultimately, it's gonna be fun to see Carter again, and actually this month. I know it's coming up fast, ain't it? It's already the first. Yep. Then next thing you know, we're gonna blink, and it'll be July, and we'll see each other again then. I know. So yeah. Awesome. So anything else? We just appreciate your time, Carter, man. You, uh, it was a pleasure meeting you this summer, and um, you, tr you truly well, I, appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm sure that uh, Rag Brian will be coming around down for it again, and you guys are, again, always, always welcome. Yeah. Thanks. This time, this time I'm actually going to ride my bike more than once before Rag Brian. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I've already doubled my training so far this year. I, <laughs> three times. Classic. Yeah, if if I keep it up uh, this year as I did last year, you're gonna be pulling me, Carter. <laughs> I, I, that that would be a sight to see. I mean, I. I, I, I mean, yeah, that would be something. And I <laughs> and I get the BB gun. <laughs> oh no! That, that. That 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 sounds kind of dangerous now. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or fireworks, Carter. <laughs> yes. All right, man. Well, hey, I'll be texting you during the game tonight. So, 
And if I go silent, you know why that is? It's because of cheap. Uh, I do. I, I love the I love the silent treatment. I I, I got it. <laughs> All right, buddy. Why well, hey, you take care? It's great chatting with you. Love you, and we'll talk to you soon, man. All right, son. Sound good, guys. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. Bye.